Hi, I'm Tim Byrne. This is Tim Byrne Almost Live. Patrick was on my show today, and we were in Connexia down in Denver, Colorado, last week or two weeks ago. Patrick asked me to come on the show. It's funny how we have a lot more courage when we have scotch in our hands at the bar than we do when we're in front of a microphone. But we did discuss how work order management companies, the evolution of them, where they've come over the last 10 years and where they're going to go. It's kind of an interesting conversation. So hang on to your seat, and I'll see you on the backside. From Tim Byrne from Alaska, take care. Hi, I'm Tim Burns. This is Tim Burns Almost Live. Uh, uh, we're with Connex, which is, used to be Prism. The trade show changed its name brand this year. Uh, we're in Denver, Colorado, and I'm, I'm with a brand new friend of mine. Patrick Patrick. Griffith. Patrick, what's the name of your company? CMI Mechanical. How long have you been with them for? Four years. But you, uh, you've changed sides in your career. You uh, were on the other side. <laughs> yeah, it, it is a little unusual. I... I've been in the business of facility of property management for 40 years. About half of that has been as a contractor. So uh, mechanical, electrical, control contracting, but uh, on the facility management side, at a pretty high level for a couple of large corporations, director of facilities. So been on both sides of the fence. How long did you do the retailer side for? Uh, yeah, about 20 years in you know, different companies. Uh, what made you go to the other side? You know, because uh, usually guys stick, right? They, and when they jump, they jump for a reason. You know, at, you know, at a high level with big companies in the facility side, it can be uh, a little stressful. I mean, it costs me a marriage, uh, 60 hour work weeks, traveling all the time. That's a tough life. And I did it for a long time and just don't care to do that. Here. When you're in those big corporations, is it a lot of stress? Yeah, it sure can be. You know, um, a lot of my time was spent at, uh, Kmart. So, you know, when things are financially stressed, it, it, it makes for a st stressful. Don't job. all retailers, though, claim financial stress? Isn't that just like the genre of the day? Complaining yeah. that they don't have any money? You know, it, it, it they claim that, but some of them, you know, when it gets down to not being able to change a light bulb, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it gets pretty stressful. You and I, uh, yesterday, outside the, the Gaylord Hotel here in Denver, uh, touched on on um, the third party work order management software companies that have become the middle ground for retailer vendor relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. Uh, I think any company of any size anymore is working using some work order system. So uh, they've becoming more and more more reliant on that as the you know facility departments or structure and different companies. Uh, are reduced and uh, there's good and, good and bad things about that you know uh, we uh, uh, we in order to survive as a self-performing contractor and as an aggregator have to be very good with those systems so really the better we understand those and use them the better it is for us those have become really popular in the last 10 years mm -hmm. uh, prior to that it was using a purchase order system a lot of the retailers had their own facilities group which was much larger than what they used to be and they would execute issue out uh, make relationship with vendors and now what they've done is given they've uh, decreased headcount and dumped that on top of these uh, work order management software companies mm -hmm. and allowed them to build an infrastructure of vendors around them that come into a portal Mm -hmm. pick up work orders and the vet, the customer puts in work orders and the vendor comes and pulls out the work order. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it originally, uh, because, of, you know, and I'm, I'm from a contracting background, uh, everything had to have a purchase order. And because of the volume of purchase orders and how small they were, uh, I know that um, Sears once upon a time, which is no longer in Canada, is Sears still here in, in the United States? Uh, they, they're they, not around, are they? They, they, did, uh, <laughs> they did come back out. Uh, and Somebody's... They're operating somehow. So somebody told me a long time ago in Sears that the reason why they were going to uh, national vendors and uh, the reason why they were collaborating with uh, um, or eliminating vendors and, and collaborating with one to make a partnership, even if they knew it was being subbed out because the cost of actually executing the transaction internally per check. Mm -hmm. And what they, when they say per check, they don't mean actually writing the check, but they mean from cradle to grave. Mm -hmm. 
and this is going back 20 years ago, the guys at Sears told me it was costing about $176 from cradle to grave. Mm-hmm. And they said, the problem is uh, half the service calls are under $1,000. Now, back then they told me it was under 300 bucks mm-hmm. and, 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 their, and their cost to execute. So they said, but if we can get one bill a month, mm-hmm. we can decrease the costs. Now, from that evolution of that, as they were accumulating and, and dec- sorry, decreasing their vendor size, then they started incorporating purchase order systems that were online that were easy to execute mm-hmm. uh, and organize their vendors in a fashion that they didn't actually have to manage them individually. Because part of the problem with managing vendors or managing any large amount of humans mm-hmm. is the personalities and the, and, the, and the geographic differences in workload. Guys work differently in Pittsburgh than they do in California, than they do in Alaska, than they do in uh, Newfoundland up in Canada. Absolutely. And, and I think that a lot of the retailers didn't want to deal with all those personality dynamics, the different mm-hmm. paperwork dynamics. Uh, um, and it was easier to have everything go into a portal. In other words, the format was the same. The collection of data was the same. Mm-hmm. But now today, 10 years later, I have recently been questioning the value of the disenfranchising the human connection. Mm-hmm. Well... Uh, you, you're, you're not wrong. Uh, within that whole transaction process, using a work order system, a software system, uh, you know, one of the key things, and, and often a very problematic uh, point in that transaction, is just capturing what's going on in the job, Cap- capturing that data, whether it's what needs to be done or what was done, uh, and uh, you know, to try to take that from a, a work ticket. Uh, that you may not be able to read or take it from uh, somebody that's not familiar with the job trying to enter some note in a, in a system that, that, uh, that captures. Yes, yeah, because that. now now today, 10 years later, I find that a lot of the notes or the work scope of work descriptions are being written by laymans and not by industry people. So that it, it creates, uh, it can create a tremendous amount of work because there's confusion, there's question, they question the work. Was it done right? Was it done at all? Am I paying the right amount for this? And the, homog- and the homogenization of the mm-hmm. scope. Mm-hmm. So uh, you get water leak, mm-hmm. you know, roof leak. Yeah. Uh, and it's, and it's li- literally roof leak is written the same way, whether it's coming from the, the AC unit on the roof or, or whether it's coming from a down drain or whether it's, coming from, whether it's b- pumping up through a, a, a floor drain, mm-hmm. you get leak. Yeah. And, and, the, and the generic description uh, puts um, a lot of, a generic description from a layman ironically vendors now have taken on the layman approach and we put people in our offices that are layman's and not technical people mm-hmm. by the time it actually makes it to the technician i've found in, in the last five years maybe even six that majority of the scopes of work that were written from initial moment the the work the ticket was released mm-hmm. isn't actually what's going to be executed on the other side Is that, would you say that's true yeah i would say that there's a. Uh, uh, you know, often, um, more times than not, a disconnect uh, communicating what actually needs to be done or what the customer wants. And, and on the same side, you know, uh, communicating what was done and, you know, was it done right or, or whatever. So I, I've found in, and in, in our company, the only way to, to, to capture that is through a conversation. So any, any work that goes through our company uh, there is a verbal communication before the job starts and when it ends. Uh, so uh, we, we at, the, often, at the store le- or at the, at at the, the site yeah, level from, from the tech at, at the site. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, we have people that aren't necessarily um, you know, HVAC technicians, but they, they have to understand uh, uh you know, some of the basic components of what, what the tech does, uh, ask the right questions, uh, and, and understand enough to know that, oh gosh, you did that, we should have a picture of that. Uh, and so uh, we can often have, a, you know, a five minute conversation, uh, sometimes before, just to make sure they have everything and understanding of the job. But afterwards, uh, you know, cap- capturing what was done from the tech and then entering it simultaneously into the work order system. The, the other challenge I've seen um, start to accumulate is the store puts in a request. The request is validated by somebody at the retail head office level. The head office level then puts a docket into the work order system. The work order system then spits it out to the vendor. Then the vendor contacts the store. That chain 
mm-hmm. is taking too long now. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've noticed that more and more of our clients uh, put things into a P1, a priority one, um, not because it is or isn't a priority one, but because at the, I, I believe my hypothesis is that at the store level, they've learned or gotten frustrated over the last five years yeah. that if they put it in as a priority two or priority three, it could be weeks mm-hmm. and weeks until they see the change room door get fixed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so we, they put everything into a P1. We, we absolutely see that. Yeah, and that yes. and, but, but it's falsifying. So what it's not done is numbed the entire vendor world of the mm-hmm. P1 because mm-hmm. P1s aren't real. And the problem is, is that the process takes so long to get around. With all this technology, the process now is taking longer because there used to be a time when a store manager would call you and go, this is leaking. And you'd have that conversation at that, that moment. Yep. Uh, and now that doesn't happen. It can ha- it could, that process could take five days before three days because we we get these calls mm-hmm. from the um, work order management companies and they're like, "You need to do this now. It's P one P one." Then you finally get a whole store manager. You go, oh, we've had this problem for months. Exactly. And you're like, "What? Yeah, this is a P one. We were told to get there in four hours." Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, do you get that? You must a, get that. There's, there's a huge cost to crying wolf. You know. Um, but haven't they set themselves up that it just becomes it's part, it's innate now to cry wolf every call? Yeah, you know it's, I, you know maybe it's a, a cyclical thing that uh, I, th- I think some customers that we're dealing with they understand that because we don't hesitate to tell them. You know, it's like uh, this this is going to end up costing you money. Uh, you know, but cry. sometimes it's just, uh, I find the disenfranchisement between the retailer and the vendor with that middleman company the, I call it middleman the middle mm-hmm. person company the, the worker management company because we get told go no matter what mm-hmm. we don't care mm-hmm. uh, from the, the work order manager because their their mandate is to show a delta in their performance of XYZ mm-hmm. and they can't get that delta in their performance they can't get that matrix to look perfect mm-hmm. you know these IVR ratings sure. you rate your company the IVR ratings they can't get a perfect IVR so they're trying to get all of us vendors to perform at a certain level so that they can go to their customer and go look exactly. we've done all the P1s within two hours and, and they want they want to have all that vision the problem is that I when you get when you go this isn't a P1 and we need to manage our we're not a fire department we need to manage our troops properly, mm-hmm. but they make you go. They make you go no matter yeah. what. And, and yeah. meanwhile, you could, if you could call the head guy at the mm-hmm. retail and go, and they go, no, no, just do the job. And, yeah. and I've, not all the time, but probably 50%. Mm-hmm. We get told, go, 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 pick mm-hmm. up the ticket, pick up the ticket, pick up the ticket, make it happen, make it happen. Yeah. Meanwhile, we don't need to, and we could make the call and go, yeah. hey, guys, let's manage this better. Yeah. You know, it's... I think they're burning capital. Yeah. It's, you know, yet communication is everything. And... Uh, you know, to, to really treat the customer fairly, you have to tell them, you know, this, uh, you know, this is costing you, you money. Here, here's what we recommend. What, you know, come up with some alternatives. Uh, you know, it's it, hard, it, though, when you have the oxymoron of a work with a management company pushing the P1 down your throat. Uh, right. <laughs> so, well, while you know that you should have this intimate conversation with a retailer it's, and go, ah. We should manage these in a different perspective. So, 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 yeah. So, so we, our company self performs. We have uh, maybe seventeen trucks on the road. Where do you uh, work out of? Uh, based in Denver. Okay. So we self perform throughout Colorado, but all, everything else. Uh, so we're we're on both sides of that. We'll get work orders uh, from uh, aggregators, thir- thir- third party yep. people, and of course, it, then we are too. Uh, so. Uh, as a tech, uh, a, a long time tech growing up in the business, you know, uh, you know I, I kind of understand what, what the tech goes through. Don't you find them getting jaded, uh, the techs? Well, yeah, there's a cost to it, you know. Um, you, you mentioned the IVR systems, you know, and the requirements that the tech has to go through to properly check in. And if he doesn't do something right, you might you don't get paid, you might not get paid. There's, you know, uh, the average tech, that that is it's, it's very costly, you know. They're frustrated. They're hot. They've got. They're under a lot of pressure. And then you've got you know somebody saying like, "Well, you might not get paid because you didn't you know, punch like, in the six digit code." What? I'm going to charge you the spe- our special price. You know, and seriously, <laughs> I, and I've had that conversation as a tech with companies, and, and uh, you know, that along with getting paid is is. A, a real disconnect and a problem, a costly problem for a lot of customers that don't understand that. I get a, I, I, I constantly promote now with inside my organization for the last year or two, 
about life balance, uh, being able to laugh at work, have fun. Mm. And when I see my technicians, um, and they don't, nobody, you know, they get paid by the hour. Mm-hmm. But when I, when, and so you really getting paid by the hour, shouldn't care where you're going. Yet they do. Sure. And they get frustrated when they get sent to a mm-hmm. uh, 7-Eleven hot dog roller call that really is a plug toilet call that really turned out to be a, a roof drain. Yep. <laughs> and, and I watch them get frustrated hmm. because, and, 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 and they do covertly talk about how, um, and they use far worse language than I'm about to say, but how mm-hmm. stupid we look mm-hmm. uh, on a management level because they get sent to things that are dumb, which then makes them not work efficiently or put themselves in a position where they're going to critically think out a problem to make it more efficient because they go, nobody cares anyway. And I didn't put my IVR in, so I might not get paid for this one, so I don't care. And, I, and, I, and the system currently, because we've such disenfranchised ourselves, has put the technicians in a position where there's less care on site because they think that there's just going to be another P1 critical call for a hairbrush in the urinal tomorrow. That, that is so well said. I can't tell you. That's, just, that's, that's perfect. That ex- is exactly what's going on. There is a, a huge unknown cost, <clears throat> cost to that. And... Uh, I don't know. See, and the, and the funny thing is the, the, com- the computer science guys, the technology people don't mm. actually know how to measure it, so they don't. <clears throat> True. So if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. It's a rule number one in business. You got to measure it. You got to manage it. That's what the, all these third-party facility uh, work order management companies um, really chant. I'm going to measure your business. Measure, 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 measure. What you can't take out of business is the human. Mm-hmm. And they can't measure the frustration on the site level. Between, and ironically, the technician mm-hmm. and the store manager if you brought them in the same room together, you got a symposium, take you and I out mm-hmm. of the equation, take the guys from the office, take the work order management companies out of the office, mm-hmm. and you just take the store manager and the technician, and you bring 10 of each, mm-hmm. and you brought them in, and you know how you, you do um, like a, a market research? And you brought them in and said, what do you think of the system? Uh, that would be fun, I'm going to tell you, they're all going to say it's, excuse my language, it's fucked. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's stupid. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. Uh, we do a lot of stuff uh, repetitively and we don't feel like it's getting pushed forward. It's not being advanced. Mm -hmm. Thus, we lose our enthusiasm on advancing it because it doesn't get advanced because the technology is actually crushing the inspiration of the human experience. Yeah. Yeah, Think of the cost on the, on the, on the store manager side. He's frustrated. Everybody's stupid. You know, they, these guys are uh, killing me because of my cells, you know? Um, I mean, that deep, that deep motivation and, and that mindset, what does that really cost that company? And antagonizing, and, like a constant. Yeah. Every time they put a service call in, every time they uh, the trade shows up and it's the wrong thing, every mm-hmm. time it takes longer than they thought. And, 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 and on top of that, when they go to find out um, an update, mm-hmm. it's electronic update. And I'll be honest, I don't trust them. I would rather call Puri later and ask him where my package is mm-hmm. than just look at the ticket ex- ticket number and go, okay, they say it's three days, and then it doesn't show up in three days. Now you're five days. And, and, uh-huh. and I think we've really put uh-huh. those frontline people, the people that really drive the economy, mm-hmm. um, at risk of feeling devalued, demoralized, not cared for, and all these people that are trying to justify their existence to upper management and the, and the shareholders have forgotten that there's all those little folk Mm-hmm. that actually drive your business and make it mm-hmm. that, that are not happy with how we're actually managing their surface work. Yeah. You know, as, and I know I'm being really critical, a, but that's my job. <laughs> I have to, I have to have that conversation with the tech, you know, get them back on track, you know, understand what's going on, you know, pull it off. Here's what we're going to do. Kind of, you know, uh, adjust the job so, so, so that we still come out and, and, uh, keep the customer, so I have that conversation so many times a day. It's not even funny. You know, You're doing like, therapy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the Texan. You're a the, very expensive therapist. Very expensive. Yeah. You know, I mean, and my people do the same thing. We do the same thing. We're, we're constantly doing therapy between the store manager mm-hmm. and the tech. Uh, out of, look at it. And they're, and they're not because they're not feeling like it, there's a human engagement in the execution of their tasks being done. And they're such disenfranchised from really no, like, I don't know. Uh-huh. I've heard so many store managers, oh, we've had this problem forever. We tried before. Yeah. I've heard that yeah. is a everyday, uh, really? the problem's been around for a month or two months. Uh, we've tried before. Oh, somebody else showed up yesterday. 
uh, oh, the, the showed up yesterday. Uh, How, my guys get sent to calls that have already been somewhat taken care of or somebody else showed up mm -hmm. because they sent a, a, a HVAC guy first and then they sent a plumber. Uh, then they sent a, a, a filter change guy. Then they sent a roofer. Then they sent a, 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 a handyman. And I've seen store managers go, okay, you're my third guy that's looked at this problem. Uh -huh. And I'm getting charged for it. And these retards are killing me with, uh, you know, with entering, yeah, with with entering notes, with uh, entering notes into the website uh -huh. <laughs> that don't actually get read. Yeah. And that only become part of a bigger matrix. And I'm not yeah. actually having any kind of great experience. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that so. made me sound really, really critical. And I'm really, really sorry. But I, I think I, I'd like to see the technicians and the store managers have a great experience. Yeah. You know, there's. It, it should happen that way, and it, and, it, and everybody Not, should enjoy their job. You know, if you if, if you're attacking, you decided to be in the HVAC business. You know, make the best out of it. Have a great day. Fix something. Go home happy. Uh, you know. But don't you feel bad. like like I, I mean I've gone to job sites where I shouldn't I didn't have to go, and I get frustrated because I just killed two hours of my life. As a t and you feel devalued because somebody made you drive out to look at something that has nothing to do with you. It's, and my text call me go. This isn't even our job. And then make them devaluate some. It's it's demoralizing. It really is. Yeah, that's yeah. a great word. It's demoralizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You must yeah. have the same problem. Same conversation with your text. Same yeah. conversation with store. Is it is it, is what I'm seeing mm -hmm. a common conversation? Yeah. That yeah. You're it, in? it really is. And and, and 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 the only thing they get good of this, that, you know, if you can if you can articulate that problem to the decision makers in a company, uh, you know, hopefully they they understand that they appreciate they'll appreciate that so much. I think uh, I you're think you're going to have a customer after that. I think you're going to cut costs. Mm. I, I, actually, my hypothesis is you'll cut a, a double digit percentage off your costs in mm. operating your stores if you can make it a better experience for the store manager and the tech mm -hmm. and not a better experience for an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I think that more and more, uh, you know, some, some senior facility people are, are, are understanding that, you know. It's, the more you talk about it, though, the more likelihood it'll actually change. And in places like Connect, yeah. like this trade show here in uh -huh. Denver, Colorado, this podcast, somebody listens to it and goes, oh, shit, Tim's, Tim's got something. It's, it's, mm. it's, it's, it's the human experience between the store manager and the tech. Those are the two people that you have to get together. Yeah. All of the rest of us uh -huh. don't matter. The store manager matters mm -hmm. and the technician matter. Yeah. And ironically, everything we do mm -hmm. from head office, from our offices, is all about the technician and the store manager. And I really believe that we don't do a good job bringing those two together. I couldn't agree more, really. Just, That's awful, eh? Yeah. How's your business doing? We're doing really well. You know, I, I think we... Uh, How old is your company? Uh, 40 years. Holy cow. Yeah. So uh, we've been doing the uh, third-party aggregator uh, part of that for just about 15. So, uh, you know, in, in the old days, uh, in the facility world, for me, that would be, you know, it's like, oh, my gosh, why would you use a third party, an aggregator? That's silly. I don't want to pay for that. But we, we, we can make a, a, a very good uh, value explanation of what we do and, and why we're valuable as that person mostly because we're a contractor we understand the business we understand all the technical aspects of it you know myself being in it for 40 years uh, we, we utilize that we utilize expert uh, work order system uh, you know capabilities <clears throat> but having long time techs with other companies partners they're, they're just like they're like one of my techs, They're almost like an employee. So, uh, but the we, legislation laws you're the same. Sorry, I'm from mm -hmm. Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. and the legislation laws in Toronto, in, in Ontario, and in Canada, uh, your subcontractors are now under your. They are now identified as an employee of yours. Mm -hmm. Do you have the same re uh, labor law regulations you know, down I, here? I, I, it, not, not quite. I mean, as, as a, as a separate entity a company that's being contracted to perform something um that that's still very different in, but in if the they're United working States. 40 hours a week for you don't they all the matter even if they're even if they hand you a sub an invoice every week but they're working 40 hours a week as a contractor uh, do they not get tossed into your if 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 you're directly human supervising resource? that em employee <laughs> right. it, can, it, can, it could be taken that way for sure but 
uh, you know. Do you operate 24 hours, seven days a week? We do. Do you get many yeah. night calls at night? Uh, there's a few uh, customers, you know, the, the drug companies, they'll leave some cooling, uh, uh, so that becomes critical. Uh, it used to be some with the data centers, a lot of that's going away. Uh, I haven't had a, like an emergency data center call in a long time. Not so much. Maybe we'll get maybe a couple a month where it's like after 10 p.m. Not, not much. Do you smoke marijuana? Uh, not in a long time. It's legal here in Colorado. Oh, yeah. It's legal in all yeah. of Canada now, too, as well. Uh, okay. Well, um, you know. Are you allowed to smoke in the streets here? Uh, I don't think so. We are in Ontario. Maybe maybe so. Uh, maybe We've so, had some questions know. about uh, what, why you can't drink a bottle of beer out in the street, but you can smoke a joint. Mm. Which, yeah, they don't know how to control, right? Because they can't control you smoking a joint when you're uh, walking uh, through a park. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a libertarian, you know, but it's... Is that your uh, politics? You're libertarian? Uh, uh, yeah. And I mean, Ayn Rand? But, uh, yeah. <laughs> little Atlas <but>, Shrugged? <laughs> exactly. But, uh, you know, it's a little like... Little fountainhead? Uh, Got mar- it. Marijuana's a drug, you know? And I've seen, uh, you know, technicians uh, or people professionally that, uh, you know, I don't know, for whatever it's worth, it's a drug. Be careful. You know, it does affect y- your body. So, hey, make it legal all over. I, and I, I think I can say that for maybe most drugs. But. Have you done the Connect show before? Uh, yeah, I was actually a, a, a founding member. I, I was like the I was like one of the first 11 people involved with PRISM, kind of just developing the idea. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. That's exciting. When you were with Kmart? Yep. Long time ago. So are you, would you go be on the board again? Would you go try and put your... Yeah, you know, I probably would. I'm, uh, you know, the the way this uh, thing has grown, uh, I'd certainly take a look at that. Perhaps I can provide some value. So are you running a booth here? We do. We have a booth. Uh, See my mechanical over on that side. Uh, We... uh, Is it good for you, the show? Do you get contacts? Yeah, you know, this this is really, uh, you know, if, if, if we can have someone's attention long enough to explain the value of, or how there can be a value to uh, a third party aggregator, aggregator uh, then, we're, then we're, we're in pretty good shape. What's your phone number? 303-373-5034. Patrick? Thank you for coming on. Hey, this you. is Tim Burton, Tim Burton Almost Live. I'm your Wednesday night drive home. I, uh, I'm really sorry for all the third party work order companies. Don't fire Burn on Demand and Stadia and Phil Trex for me slagging you. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, stick your head above that foxhole. You can't become a hero unless you take a risk every day. You enjoy the show. Have a good night. Thanks, guys. Thanks.